Proudly, we hail. City, where the American stage begins. Here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story. As proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled Operation Beethoven. This is the heartwarming story about the hearts of three soldiers of the United States Army and how they lost them completely to a young and talented musician. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first... Today, your rapidly expanding United States Army needs intelligent young men with ability and ambition. Men intelligent enough to recognize the vital need for a strong army. Men with ability to be trained in a necessary job. Men with ambition enough to secure the future for themselves and their loved ones. Does that description fit you? Can you qualify? For full information on how you can fit in with the finest, check with your nearest United States Army recruiting station now. Remember, the United States Army, the senior service of our armed forces, needs you. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hailed production, Operation Beethoven. I think it was old Will Shakespeare who said something about music soothing the savage breast. While it's true that Corporal Paul Adams, infantryman, United States Army, didn't have any savage instincts, music nevertheless did play a big part in his off-duty activities. Stationed a few miles outside of Vienna, he could go into the city on any night and find the type of music he sought. For to the Viennese, Beethoven, Mozart, and Brahms are as dear as life itself. Of course, to Corporals Joseph Xavier Sully and Andrew Francis Tinker, this kind of thinking was strictly for the birds. Anyone who didn't like their jive in the groove should be observed for crackage of the mind. And almost nightly, they would discuss this situation with their stricken buddy, Corporal Adams. Look at him. Will you just look at him? Corporal Sully, I can't. He hurts my eyes. He's our friend, our pal, our buddy. We can't let him go on like this, Tink. Ah, oh, dear friends and noble hearts, at ease. At ease, he says, at ease. Oh, how is it possible? Paul, you're coming apart at the seams. I hate to see a nice, bright guy like you going to see. You know, I hear strange noises. Hey, what did I tell you? He's hearing things. Look at his eyes. Look at the way his mouth hangs open. Dr. Sully, I say the lad is suffering from an advanced stage of Beethovenitis. Paul, now, now take your time and, and tell us slowly. Who are you escorting to this thing tonight? You won't tell us all? Uh -uh. It's not generally known, but Queen Zigwilga of Alpenstock and I are going steady. He makes fun of us. The truth is, he ain't taking no one. That's the serious part, Dr. Tinker. I know, I know. Dr. Sully, no man should be allowed to attend one of these affairs without a companion. A female companion, of course. Of course. Maestro, just where are your female companions? Oh, gosh, fellas, I don't know. I must have lost them someplace. Try looking under that bunk. Now, step aside, son. I'm in a hurry. Look, he's putting his tie on backwards. Hey, shall we try a little shock treatment? Try it by all means, but I fear the case is hopeless. He needs indoctrination. Oh, why don't you gentlemen go take a shower? Corporal Adams, I have here an indoctrination machine, and I want you to listen closely while I play you something, something solid, real, and sincere. Mm-hmm. You'll excuse me while I ignore you. <laughs> Now you're making me live. Oh, shall we dance? Sure. A gavotte or a minuet? Oh, I'm at your mercy. Hey, hey, what's the idea? Gentlemen, my ears are sensitive. Such harsh noises are for boors, bounders, and bumpkins. Aside oh. from that, I bid you good night. <laughs> Don't wait up. Dr. Sully, the boy is strictly for the birds. But strictly. Oh, no, you're both wrong. I am strictly for Beethoven. <laughs> And 
And so, nothing loath, our hero took himself away from the diagnosis of his friends and went to hear some Beethoven. Arriving late, his eyes unaccustomed to the darkness of the hall, he made his way to his seat. And, as you might imagine, his course was somewhat difficult. Uh, I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Uh, yes. John Clemens, you're sitting on my lap. You? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Excuse me. Oh, my foot. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. Young men, I don't care whether you are the Emperor Maximilian. Sit down and be quiet. I'm awfully sorry, Fraulein. I didn't mean to step on your foot. Please, I would like to listen to the music. Uh, did I hurt your foot? I think you broke it. Now, please keep still. Okay, I want you to listen to the music. Madam, we all do. Quiet! You'll be quiet! came the intermission without further incident, and with the lights up, our hero wished that, like the turtle, he could crawl into his shell. Well, that is, until he observed the girl whose foot he'd stepped on sitting next to him. And then, as Corporal Sully had pointed out, our hero's mouth hung open, and looking like he'd just been struck by a bolt of lightning, he sat staring at her, when the music began again. Sir, is there something the matter with you? Huh? Are you sick? Oh, oh, no, no, I, uh, I don't think so. I... Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, I didn't mean to step on your foot. Well, let's not go into it again. Oh, uh, well, uh, did I hurt you? I think I will leave. Oh. The, uh, music's very good, isn't it? Yes, when it is not being interrupted. Oh, I, uh, should have waited until the piece was over. I think we can all agree on that. Shh. I get you something to drink? No, thank you. I'm not thirsty. Oh, I'm not thirsty either. My, uh, my name is Paul Adams. That's nice. Mm. Do you like Beethoven? Yes. Shh. Shh. Uh, do you go to concerts often? You're very inquisitive, aren't you? Well, I, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pry. Well, I don't be such an old woman. That soldier's trying to be friendly. Shh. Mine here, mind your own business. If you were my daughter, I'd take you over my knee. Now, wait a minute. That's no way to talk to a lady. But I'm only trying to be of help. Well, when I want any help, I'll ask for it. Would you both be quiet? I came here to listen to some music. That's all I want to do. I ask you, is romance dead in Wien? Shh. And when the concert came to an end, our hero, inspired and filled with manly courage by the works of the great composer, decided that it was time to attack boldly and in full armor. Oh, romance was not dead in old Vienna. This he would prove, for a good soldier knows how to deploy his forces and move forward despite the odds. Ah, uh, Fraulein, my name is Paul Adams. So you have already informed me. And now, if you will excuse me, I would like to go. Well, uh, Fraulein... What's your name? Sir, you are impertinent. Oh, no, no. Determined, not impertinent, Fraulein. <laughs> Mama, you hear that? <laughs> that is good. Determined. A man must be determined. I wish you would go home. Fraulein, you have no manners. Will you please go home? Come, Mama, we go home. And now, I would like to go home, too. Well, uh, may I take you there? Oh, you have a nerve, sir. Mm -mm, I'm just determined. Why? Beethoven makes me determined. <laughs> what are you, Paul Adams? A general? No, Fraulein. Only a corporal. Corporal? Mm hmm. Just like Napoleon. May I see you home? It's quite a long walk. Well, good. If it's too far, I'll carry you. I think Beethoven has made you mad. Well, that's what my friends say. Will you promise not to step on my feet? I promise. Shall we go? All right. You win. Oh, one thing. I, uh, I never walk people home whose names I don't know. Lisa. Lisa Rennick. Lisa. Lisa Rennick, like music. Oh, and to think of all the concerts I've been to that you've been to, and we never once met. All that good music wasted. You just never managed to step on my foot before. How wonderful it is to be clumsy. <laughs> Oh, isn't it a grand night? Yes, I love the autumn. 
smell and feel of it. You know, the stars have a sharper look. And even poor old Vienna seems gayer. Oh, just think of it. Mozart walked these streets, and Beethoven, and so many others. And now, Corporal Adams. That's right. Well, it's pretty darn good when you think of it. A guy like me getting a chance to be here. Are all American soldiers so interested in classical music? <laughs> I've got a couple of buddies you should meet. They think I'm slightly crazy. <laughs> oh, here we are. Oh, this is where you live. I thought you said it was a long way. It didn't seem like such a long way. Well, maybe it's only a long way when... when you walk alone. I've been doing that for a long time. Look, next Thursday night, how about going with me to the Vienna Plots? All Brahms. I know. Will you? I shouldn't. Give me seven good reasons why. <laughs> I guess I can. All right, I'll meet you here at eight. Is it a date? It's a date. And now I've got to go in. Good night, Lisa Rennick. I'm awfully sorry if I hurt your foot, but I'm awfully glad I stepped on it. <laughs> Hey, Corporal Tinker, it's back. So I observe, Corporal Sully. Looks kind of glassy-eyed. What'd you expect? Uh, shall I question it? At your own risk. Boy, oh boy, you there. Uh, are you able to communicate? Oh, she's like a dream, like something you read about. Hey, will you look what this square Beethoven has done to the boy? Here, help him off with his coat. The most wonderful, the most beautiful. Oh, you guys have no idea. A dame! He met a dame! You mean they allow women to go to those things? Did you really meet a dame, boy? What's your name? <laughs> Brunhilde? <laughs> her name, meatheads, is Lisa. And when you speak it, bow. Uh-huh. And how did you meet her? In the middle of a cadenza? Yeah. I stepped on her. Well, I always say it takes all kinds. Oh, live and let live. That's my motto. Yeah, I stepped on her foot by accident. What's she look like? What does she look like? Oh, what does a princess look like? I tell you, she's part Beethoven, part Schubert, a touch of Brahms, a Mendelssohn concerto. Brother, she's the works. You know, I've heard a lot of guys speak about a lot of dames, but this absolutely is the most disgusting description I ever heard. What is she, a phonograph record? Nah, idiots enough. I go to my sack. To sleep. Perchance to dream. I thought he was done for before. Now I know he's finished. He's... Hey, the lights, will you? Let's get a little sick time. Oh, good night, sweet prince. May flights of angels guide thee to thy rest. Will you listen to it rattle? Phew, let's get him transferred. Yeah, pipe down. Oh, Lisa. 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 Oh, Lisa! Lisa! You are listening to the Proudly We Hail production, Operation Beethoven. We will return in just a moment for the second act. The man who measures up will succeed anywhere. For a life of excitement and adventure, join the United States Army. You know, the Army is the proving ground, the place where the men and the boys part company, where you learn more about how to take care of yourself and how to lead others in a few short months than you could in a lifetime of civilian activity. In the Army, your opportunities for advancement and leadership are unlimited, but you've got to have what it takes. The man who measures up here will succeed anywhere. Can you measure up? If you think you can, then here's an opportunity for you to serve your country and build a man-sized career for yourself. Visit your local United States Army recruiting station and get complete details today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of Operation Beethoven. And so, night of Beethoven held hands through Brahms, stared at each other through an evening of Mozart, and were positively struck dumb while being serenaded by the romantic words of Mendelssohn. Ah, youth, ah, love. Ah, uh, Vienna and Wiener Schnitzel. Well, here we are. That's right. Paul, I... Yes? Nothing. Oh, Lisa. Yes? I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to kiss you. But you... Oh, 
I don't mind, Paul. Hey, who's that? Oh, I'm afraid it's Jan, my brother. He shouldn't be playing now. He'll be waking everyone up. Your brother? Well, he should be waking everyone up with music like that. Well, I'll have to go in and stop him, Paul. Well, you never told me you had a brother, Lisa. Can I meet him? Uh, maybe some other time. There's no better time than now, Lisa. Uh, are you going to be impertinent again? Mm -mm, just determined. Oh, all right, come on. Jan, this is no time to be playing the piano. Oh, is it so late already? I thought it would not hurt to play a little. There's someone with you? Yes. Paul, this is my brother, Jan. Jan, this is Corporal Paul Adams. Oh, it is a pleasure, sir. Hi. Already I have heard so much about you. Jan! All she does is talk about you. She must really like Jan, you. Jan, if you don't be still, I'll send you straight to bed. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Jan. You're, you're quite a pianist. Ah, I'm not so good, especially on this poor old wreck. It is, uh, how you say, uh... A mess. Well, you make it sound fine. And now I think it is time you said good night, young man. Yeah, I can sleep now. It was very nice to meet you, sir. Well, I hope next time I come, Jan, you really sit down and play for me. I would be honored to try. Good night, Liebchen. Good night, Lisa. How old is he? Twelve. Twelve, and he can play that way. On that piano. He has a very great talent. Lisa. He's blind, isn't he? Yes, Paul. He's blind. A 12-year-old boy with a very great talent who sits at that wreck of a piano and makes music pour out of it. A 12-year-old boy, sightless, whose fingers glide over the battered keys with a sure, proud touch. I tell you, boys, I've never seen anything like it. Blind, huh? Yeah, completely blind. Tough. Just a little tow-haired kid. Guts, huh? Oh, man, but plenty. I don't know how he played that thing. It was so beat up, it looked like one solid chord, and the whole thing looked as if it had collapsed. Well, that's the way it goes, Doc. Oh, he ought to have something better than that to play on. Can't you gal pick something up for him? Well, if she could, don't think she wouldn't. She doesn't make much teaching school. You know, there are a couple of pianos over in the service club. A fat lot of good that'll do him. Hey, now, wait a minute. Maybe you've got something there. Hmm? Maybe I could get permission to bring the kid out once or twice a week. Hey, maybe you better go lay it on the line to the CO. Sully, that is the most sensible thing you've said since you've been in the Army. Look at me, I'm improving. So I went to the CO and told him about Jan, and he sent me to the captain in charge of the service club, and, and now it's all set. Every Saturday afternoon, I'll pick Jan up and take him out to the post and... Well, Lisa, what's the matter? Well, you shouldn't have done it. Oh, you give me seven good reasons why not. You're impertinent. Determined. Oh, Paul, you're wonderful. And so are you. Jan will be filled. A real piano to play on. You're sure it will be all right? There will be no trouble. Lisa, I assure you, my CO assures you, the captain assures you, the whole United States Army assures you. I could kiss you all. Well, how about settling for me? I'm the jealous type. All right, Napoleon. Now, come on. Let's go tell Jan all about it. <laughs> No, go to sleep. Hey, did you hear who's coming through here on a USO tour? Who, your brother Mo? Oh, wise guy. No, a pal of yours. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Richards? Uh, uh, Richardson, yeah, John Richardson. Oh, I don't know any John Richardson. What does he do, juggle? No, he just... John happens... Richardson? You mean John Richardson, the famous concert artist? Yeah, that's the guy I'm talking about. Hey, hey, Lisa? Oh, how are you? No, 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 nothing's wrong. Listen, John Richardson, the great pianist, is out here. Yeah, that's right, on a USO tour. I, I hope you don't mind, but I had a talk with him about Jan. Oh, no, now, don't get excited. He wants to hear Jan play. Yes, you bring him out on the bus after supper, and I'll meet you at the gate. You can tell Jan the boys want to play for them or something. 
What? Well, what's the matter? Oh, this is nothing to cry about. Blow your pretty nose, get Jan ready, and I'll meet you at the gate around 8.15. You know where to get the bus? Good. What? Likewise, I'm sure. In any language. <laughs> Miss Rennick, I'm sure there's no need to tell you you have an extremely talented brother. And the fact that he's blind makes his ability even more startling. Has he a teacher? For a time he had one, but soon the teacher said there was nothing more he could show him, and, well, it... it... I know, I know. It cost a lot of money for a good teacher. Yes, and we have not that kind of money. Tell me, have you heard of Papa Henrik Muller? Oh, yes, but... Well, Papa's an old friend of mine. I think he'd do me the favor of taking Jan as a pupil. In fact, after he hears him play, I'm sure he will. Uh, good day, gentlemen. Um, good day. Yeah, fine day. It may snow. Oh, yes, 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 it, it may that... Um... Yes, there's something I can show you, boys. Well, uh, are you Herr Obermeyer? Yeah, yeah, that is me, all right, all of me. <laughs> well, uh, we're looking for a piano for a Christmas present. A good piano. Which won't cost much. Uh, gentlemen, soldiers, there, there is no such things. Well, no such thing as what? A good piano that does not cost much. That's no way to look at it. It's bound to snow. Uh, there is no other way to look at it. Pianos are, are very dear. Mm, uh, what about a nice fitter? Well, uh, how much is that piano there? Um, that one there? I don't see any other one there. Uh, gentlemen, I would be afraid to tell you the price. Well, I will show it. There. That isn't the price. That's the national debt. This piano is to be a gift for a very talented boy. The most talented in all Vienna. Papa Muller is handling him exclusively. Ah, Papa Muller, so. Uh, and, and who is this boy? Jan Rennick. Jan Rennick, Jan Rennick. Never heard of him. Well, maybe you'd like to. Hmm? What do you mean? I brought a record. We'll just put it on here and let you listen. Uh, gentlemen, it makes no difference who you have on that record, but... Well, go ahead. Play it anyway. Some people just don't know an opportunity when they hear it. Imagine being able to say that it was your piano on which little Jan Rennick, the blind pianist, did his practicing. If Papa Muller is to have the credit for teaching, why shouldn't you have the honor of supplying the instrument? I can see we better go down the street to that other fellow's shop. Uh, what's his name? Stuppenhauser? Never. Well, I don't think Herr Obermeyer has the ear to understand great music. A 12-year-old boy, you say. Blind. A blind boy. Maybe another Mozart. Or uh, Brahms. Or even Beethoven. You don't fool me. This is no joke. Well, if you like, call Papa Muller. Oh, come on, Herr Obermeyer. Where's your Christmas spirit? Uh, a blind boy. <laughs> Makes me cry. Such playing. Where does this boy live? Oh, my wife, she will cut my throat, but I do not care. Nein, I do not care. And so, on Christmas Eve, Corporals Adams, Sully, and Tinker presented themselves front and center at the apartment of Lisa Rennick. And there, laden with all sorts of goodies, they sat down to partake of each other's company. <laughs> Is it not the most wonderful Christmas Eve, Lisa? Oh, it's the most wonderful I can remember. Ah, uh, never was a finer crowd gathered. Another uh, glass, Alphonse? By all means, Gaston. Lisa? Oh, no, 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 thank you. I'm full right up to the top. Ah, will you look at the love light burning in that boy's eyes. Oh, pay no attention to them. Tell me, Paul, do you kiss her very often? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, Jan, whenever I can. If you don't stop, I will leave the room. Is it almost Christmas? It won't be long, Jan. <sighs> I hope not. I'm... I'll get that. Gentlemen, I, I have come and... Uh... And a Merry Christmas to you all. Well, Santa Claus Obermeyer himself. I don't understand. <laughs> Lisa, this is Herr Obermeyer, and he's 
He's brought something for Jan. Uh, bring it up. Uh, bring it up carefully, carefully. Yeah, yeah. What is it? A piano. Oh, beautiful piano. Jan, a piano. For me? A piano for me? Compliments of Herr Obermeier, Jan. Nonsense, nonsense. Compliments of these brave soldier boys. Oh, no, easy there, Hans, Hans. We must not spoil it. Now bring it right in, Hans. Oh, right in Paul. Here. Paul, what have you three wonderful fools done? Oh, I can't believe it. A piano for me. My very own. Hey, hey, hey now, folks. Let's not all break down and have a good cry to... That's strictly bird music. All of you, come in, come in, please. We will have a celebration. Yeah, no better time or place. Herr Obermeier, have a drink. Yeah, yeah. Hans Peter Heinrich, come to rein, come to rein. May I play something? Young fellow, if you do not play on it a great many times and become very, very famous, my wife... Oh, my wife. She will cut my throat. Play something for us, Jan. Play something for her, Obermeyer, and and for Paul and Josef and Andrew, the three wonderful soldiers. All I can say is, I wish I'd been a guy that stepped on a foot. Young men, join the army and start drawing dividends right away. Food, clothing. Quarters, training in a technical job, life insurance, retirement benefits, and a monthly check to your dependents. Of course, that security in an Army career goes double. It helps to make America strong. The Army sergeant in your nearest recruiting station downtown can tell you all about it. Go see him today. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail.